First, the USDA's Justice for All non-discriminatory statement, which simply states that all persons must be treated equally without regard to their race, color, national origin, sex, religious creed, disability, age, political beliefs, or reprisal or retaliation for prior civil rights activity, and that our institution provides an inclusive space for all. For more information on the And Justice for All statement, please visit the USDA's website. Hi everyone, my name is Brian from FCHS Rutgers Cooperative Extension of Gloucester County. Here at the lesson today on strategies for grocery shopping. This lesson comes from the Food Smarts curriculum, which was given to us by Leah's Pantry. All right, so outsmarting the grocery store. So when we go to the grocery store, we wanna to try to make the healthiest choices that we can, and we also wanna save money. So to start out with, I want you to think about where are the healthiest foods located in the grocery store? So the healthiest foods are gonna be, you know, your fresh fruits and vegetables, right? And, and your various fresh foods. So that's mostly around the perimeter, and usually the produce is right when you walk in, right? And maybe some of the unhealthier foods, maybe like the snack aisle, um, and we'll get to kind of where they place these different foods in just a moment. All right, so is there usually a difference in price between name brand and generic products? What about the quality? So name brand is gonna be more expensive than the generic brands, right? And the question is, are they about the same quality? And usually they, they're they pretty similar. So that is a great way to save some money at the store rather than getting a name brand, switch into the generic, and uh, you're, you're pretty much getting about the same thing. All right, so why are candy and magazines near the register? Uh, so this should be an easy one. Well, they put them there because you're just about to check out. You're more likely to make an impulse purchase and, and reach for some candy or some magazines before you, uh, you check out. All right, so where are the most expensive products located on the shelves? So usually they're going to put those eye level with you. So um, that way you see them quickly and, you know, more likely to purchase them. Um, and finally, when should you put refrigerated or frozen foods in your basket? Um, so with this, you wanna wait till the very end of your shopping. Uh, if you leave those kind of foods out too long, uh, bacteria can grow. Um, so you do wanna wait till the very end of your shopping. So these are just a few things that you can think about next time you're at the store and just kind of be aware and maybe be able to make some healthier choices and also uh, save some money. Okay, so another way to outsmart the grocery store is to check unit prices. So unit prices, all they do is they allow you to compare two packages that contain a different amount of food. So one example here, we have a 32 ounce container of yogurt and we have a six ounce on the right. So if you look at the retail price, of course the larger yogurt is gonna cost more. It's $1.62 for 72 cents. However, if you check the unit price, the 32 ounce is, you can see in kind of red there, it's five cents per ounce, where the, the one on the right is 12 cents per ounce. So you can see you actually end up saving money in the long run if you get the larger uh, yogurt, because it has a lower unit price. Now with unit pricing, of course, you need to make sure that the food you get, if you do get a larger amount that it's not too much and that you're able to eat it uh, in enough time before it goes bad, but it is a good way to save some money. So buying in bulk does help you save a fair bit of money at the grocery store. All right, and then as far as creating a meal plan or a grocery list, uh, what you're gonna do is plan your meals out for the week. So it's really good to have an idea of this ahead of time before you go shopping and have most of your meals planned out. Um, so we recommend using recipes and make a grocery list that includes ingredients you don't already have. So you have your recipes, you take a look in your kitchen, what you already have, chances are you'll have some things, but then you'll have to add some things that you don't have, uh, maybe some fresh items like fruits or vegetables. Then a good thing to do is to sort your list out by type of food. So 
you have maybe produce, meat, dairy, or dry foods. That way, when you go to the store, everything's already divided up for you. You're in your specific section, you get everything you need, and then you can move to the next section. Makes things a lot more organized. Uh, and then finally, your grocery shop. And it's a good thing to try saving your receipt. And that way you could use that to help create a uh, budget in the future. Okay, so just going to wrap up with a meal plan and grocery list sample. So this is something that you could create for when you go to the store. So on the left, you could have your meals. So you put down everything you wanna make that week. So one example we put here, healthy egg burritos. And then on the right, you have your grocery list. So you're gonna list everything you need to get at the store, but it's divided up into those different sections. So produce, meat, dairy, dry canned or box foods. And you can even divide up into more sections if you would like. This is just an example. All right, so that's it for our class today. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see everyone next time.